Well, hey there folks, this is Barry's Best Honey, and I've not got my microphone in, and I can't make this video without it. Well, hey there folks, this is Barry's Best Honey, I'm Mike, and I do bees. Welcome back to Southeast Louisiana, and my little bee operation. Well folks, it's May 22nd. It's a beautiful morning. We finally gotten out of a bunch of uh, rain patterns for at least a week now. The boxes are stacked. Everything is in place. So that's all I really do at this point in time. It is what it is. Let them fill it. And hopefully around the end of June, just strip all the boxes and go to extracted honey. That's kind of the plan. But once you get past June, and even after that tallow stops, it's even in June when I pull, it can get dangerous with robbing. So I don't like to leave a bunch on. I like to get it all off, extract it in the buckets, and uh, know what I've got for the year as far as selling. Uh, I've got to do some selling this morning, put the honey out, see who comes by to buy it. Uh, I get it, I do get a lot of questions on that note. Um, I get a lot of questions a lot of times about shipping honey. I do not ship my honey. Uh, there's a lot of different cottage food laws you got to go buy from state to state, labeling restrictions and requirements and taxes and all that good stuff. I just don't get into it. I don't ship and really I don't have enough to go to ship. But also, shipping, I mean, there's flat rate boxes, but it's hard to get those bottles in those flat rate boxes. So for what I charge for my honey by the time I ship it, you're paying for the, the, the postage and the freight or whatever you want to call it, shipping and handling. So I really don't get into shipping honey, I, I, and I don't have enough to really do a lot of shipping. And I don't want to have enough to really do a lot of shipping. I know that sounds crazy, but this isn't a, it's a business for me, but it's a business that pays for the hobby. Um, and it does pay for the hobby. I'm in the black and I'm able to buy nice things uh, But it's it's not a um, it's not my side business that I survive on. Yes, I enjoy the profits, but It's uh, it's not for that. So I, I don't go way out there. I produce what I produce I know what I need each year to get through this market and to get through local uh, clientele that we have that like you know the repeat customers and of course friends and family and things like that, but it's not a uh, it's not something I'm trying to build into a thriving business. So I just don't ship it. But we do go to this little market and that's where I've got to go. Got to go there for a few hours this afternoon. I'm gonna jump in some, some colonies and take a look through them. Uh, just some stuff. No, no real problem children out there. Everybody's doing well and settled in. I mean, I've got one I wanna show you. And explain something to you about what I do, but uh, pretty much everybody's doing fine. Uh, and super it up that needs to be super the building that needs to build and you know whatever it is they need to be doing they seem to be doing all righty then well, let's get on down the road get this market done and then uh, get on back and look through some bees all right folks so before we go out to the bee yard later this afternoon I told you I had to come to the market and this is where we have our market uh, we're in Mandeville Louisiana and this is really the only market we go to. I don't sell wholesale to stores. I don't ship like I told y'all earlier. I simply uh, take it to this market. And I don't call it a farmer's market. This is not a farmer's market. Not compared to what I grew up with. Farmer's market is somewhere where farm to market. This is more of a craft slash food. Now we have eggs. And there's uh, plenty of course. And there's canned goods and things like that. But it's a lot of um, also crafts. And uh prepared foods um, some of these vendors sell uh, foods that are frozen and, and can be prepared later but a lot of good vendors this market's been around for a while now it tags on to the actual city market which is at the trailhead but this one is uh, more of a private market it is it is the Lafitte Street market so let's take a look at it real quick and I'll show you where we sell at so this is walking down Lafitte Street heading north and uh, that's the old sign to it used to run on Thursday nights and it was, it was set up, we had a lot of actually, it was a farmer's market. We had a lot of produce, eggs and uh, meats and things like that. And it was a Thursday night deal and the locals, they wanted to set up as a local venue, but it didn't end up working out. So, oh it did for a long time, but then they went to Saturdays and it all got messed up. But here's our setup right here. Um, Evelyn, yeah, bring that on your legs. What's of course that? we put this on your legs. Oh, sell the beeswax, the cup chunk, one pound, pound and a half, pound and a half, three pound, three pound glass. Oh, they're here? 
uh, no creamed honey at this point. We are kind of out of that and out of comb honey. So we're at the point where we're kind of winding down until we get all the fresh honey put into the bottle and begin to make our creamed honey then and are able to harvest any comb honey. That's that's the plan. But we do have chunk honey, which is a chunk of comb in the honey. Let's over there's vendors inside, of course. And then here's here's what we do. Another local honey vendor here. This is Ed and their stuff. He's a he's a fellow beekeeper himself. He's got his honey in the those are what size bears are those? Those are pound and a half or pound and a half. He does pound and a half and quartz. And of course he got a whole bunch of other stuff. And then I've got and his they make this pottery and he don't have paintings anymore. I guess I've been out of the loop so long. Oh, I've got some paintings inside. Okay. He's an artist as well. Beautiful pottery that they have. Beautiful. And he's got eggs as well. Oh, and that looks like, what is that there? Quail eggs? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Alright, well anyway, so that's, uh, that's the market for the most part. All the way down there. I gotta get back to my table. All right, so here we go. Let me get on back and get this done so we can get out to the bee yard and get busy with the few things we got to do today. Okay, okay. It's not the same day as the market, but it's the same video. So, yeah, I came home from the market and uh, it's you know, 2 o'clock. Let's take a nap real quick. Then we'll get to work. I mean, we got daylight till 7.30 tonight. Well, you know, you get up from a nap, and it's Saturday, and you're in air condition. Well, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Not for me. So that's the next day. Still a beautiful day. Man, it is almost the end of May, and we're still only like, it's like 85 degrees. That is it. So anyway, here's what I want to show you guys something real quick. All right, so, you know, I sold a few nukes, and I made a few. So I want to show you this nuke. I'm going to show you why I'm going to wait for a queen to start uh, not just start laying, but to see what her pattern looks like. Here's a prime example of a nuke that uh, would have been one to sell had it turned out right. And uh, I'll explain what I'm talking about. Here's this nuke. Now, oh look, it just popped up. It's not even glued down. All right, so anyway, this nuke here, uh, I used a storm cell on it. And, oh, two weeks ago, had a laying queen. Saw her and said, okay, good. All the cells were filled. Looked good. Uh, looked like it should. Saw the queen. Was happy with it. I don't know if I marked her or not at the time. We'll see in a minute. But it's okay. We got milk brewed in all the cells. And it looked good and good and full. So we came in last week and took a look. And let me show you what I found. And why... I want to make sure I see a brood pattern before I start pawning this off for 160 bucks. First of all, I noticed the population was low. It should have been a lot more than this because we loaded it full of bees. So I had plenty of nectar and some pollen, but not a lot of bees. And yeah, they're out working, but ain't that many bees. Look at that. Very, very spotty, spotty brood. Now, Every one of those is back filled with larvae again, but the pattern was terribly spotty. Could it have been mites and they're hygienic and they yanked out a bunch? Could it have been disease? I mean, who, who knows? Was it an inferior queen? Was she new? I don't know. But as I look at this, I see eggs and larvae and everything just mixed up everywhere. Nothing uniform. Now, that's all larvae of different all larvae of different stages in there and you know she might turn out good but there's no way I can sell this to somebody no way I would and not only that the, the population has diminished because so much brood was pulled out look it was full of milk brood just like these are all full of larvae all different ages but something's wrong because the bees are pulling them out even in, and you know so I look and say okay could it be mites let's see if we see any deformed wing virus they're dying off you know and it's not always deformed wing virus either it could be a lot of things uh, there are several viruses out there but that's one of the big ones you can look for 
that I've read about that I know of, but I don't see anything. I see bees look normal. They're not crazy. They don't seem terribly stressed, but it's just not a good looking nuke. And now with the population down so much, well, if they're pulling out half the brood she's putting in, something's wrong with the brood and they're not bringing out as many bees each week, each day for that matter. So this is garbage. And I shouldn't say it like that. Uh, but it's not something I would sell. And what will I do with it? Well, probably just let them fend for themselves for a little while. And get them treated and see what happens if they're still good to go by the end of the season. And again, this one. These have all emerged, but... All emerged meaning what? How many were there that could have emerged? Just not a good looking colony. Just really dwindled, didn't reproduce once she started laying... So she looks normal. This is all full of, full of eggs, just full of eggs. So it looks normal when you see the eggs, but when we get to the capping, we, we don't look normal. So that's why I guess my point is of this, is I looked and I saw the population down, then to turn around and see the brood spotty. Well, now if I wouldn't have waited and sold this thing, because I saw all the milk brood in every cell, just like, you know, where I, the, the frame I saw her on, it was full. So all that to be said is, yes, uh, she had a, a full frame of milk brood, and that frame she was on was pretty solid eggs. I mean, solid eggs with some larvae mixed in of different ages. That's not the worst thing in the world to see when they're mixed up different ages, especially when she's new. But when you see frames with plenty of eggs, you can't just say, well, hey, she's a good queen. I got to see her pattern first through the capping. Once it's capped, if it's solid and it stays solid through the next couple of inspections, I'm good. Well, this is two inspections in three weeks' time. She's no good. Can't sell her. So, I'm not a nuke producer, that's for sure. Not planning on being. But what I do sell, when I sell it, I want it to be good. So... Let's go take a look at another one. So I'm gonna go open this one up. Uh, other day I didn't even, this is, a good, this is a good colony of bees. I popped it open, no veil, nothing. Went through it and uh, man, they were, they were good bees. Um, something to notice on that other box we just looked at, let me get under the shade, is one thing I've noticed in beekeeping with hives and inspections, if you put a top on a weak hive, oh, or, or even a, a colony that's not so strong and you super it up and you go in a week later and that lid still isn't propolized and stuck down in my experience that's not a good sign and that's what just like when I popped that nuke you could tell that thing wasn't glued down it's not a good sign so. alright well let's look at this one this nuke here was it was pulled off a of colony number five Hive number five. It was used swarm cells in it. This is the one we had in the video. So let's see what this queen looks like. And I kind of know because I looked through her the other day and waited for her brood to be capped. And again, that's what I'm looking for. See what the brood looks like capped as it gets older. So that we know, are they pulling stuff out? Are they not capping it? Tear them up or roll the queen. It's starting to cap this one. See the difference in the pattern, how it's solid? This is an outside frame. That's promising. And this one, filling it with nectar, and they've got brood in the middle, it appears. This thing's so much younger, yet it's so much more healthy. Same amount of bees put in them. Well, you know, not the exact. And the problem here is it's solid, but what we have is emerging brood. See how calm they are too? And we've got them backfilling that with nectar where she can't lay back in there. Because this is a small nuke. But this is a good nuke. This thing is fine. It is loaded with larvae up on the top. Now this old cell, I mean, this is the frame the cells were on. You can see some of the old cells. And I already told him it's got a cutout frame in it that he may want to purge later. But this was a 
cutout comb at one time. You can see where it's all mended together and had been rubber band and drone comb mixed in. And there's one of the old swarm cells that I put the frame with swarm cells in here and let a queen emerge. And you just want to see that's solid. That's solid. There's nothing wrong with that brood. This is a good colony. They are ready for a 10 frame. We got a flow, major flow, getting ready to be right on top of us, so shouldn't have to feed them for the next three weeks, and hopefully they grow and put something away, and he won't have to feed them at all. See, she's doing fine. Nothing wrong with that, and larvae all the way out to the edge. That's a good queen. That's a good queen. Oh, there she is, on the outside. So, so much when you pull up the outside frames and don't have to worry about the queen too much. Well, you see that. She's on the move, too. Uh, there you go. I think that's fair to say that's a good bunch of bees he's going to get. Um, they're ready for a 10 frame, though. It'd be perfect to put them in a 10 frame. We got a flow that'll probably last about three weeks, and that'll be good. There's enough workers to build it into a 10 frame, probably fill up. There's five now. They'll probably fill up a, a total of eight frames, three at least three more frames during the flow at their size. So that'd be good. I think they'll be fine. So anyway, that's really what I wanted to show you is uh, how my nukes turned out. Again, I'm not a nuke producer. Don't claim to be. Uh, just know if I was buying a nuke, what I would be looking for and what I would want. And I'd want something like that or better. Um, but that one is good. That's a good one. The last two were as good or better. And the fourth one I was going to sell, not so much. So we will let that one go. And there was actually five total, but one uh, didn't requeen at all. All said and done, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind producing nuke someday. Uh, it would be, uh, it's definitely lucrative, but it's a lot of work. And to me, it's a lot of pressure to make sure you've got everything ready for the customer. Um, something happens, who knows what may happen. To me, that's just a lot of pressure. And again, this is a hobby for me. So I like what I'm doing now. I like the idea of uh, I've changed my split, um, how I'm doing splits this year. I changed it from the last year and from the previous years to where I had planned cells and planned queens for whoever made and made it fine. Uh, and that left me a lot of colonies that were booming um, come mid-April, which is still way too early to be booming. Well, what a, what 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 better time than maybe the first week of April next year just pull a good solid nuke off of the top of every one of those colonies and knock them back by a couple weeks and then take those nukes and sell them um, now the problem with mine are is I'm gonna have to wait for the and I'll, of course I'll graft at that point hopefully I'm grafting next year more uh, readily and I'll have cells to put immediately in them and so what we, what we come up with is nukes that are ready and I can see what the queen looks like by the first week of May. Now, I know that's a little late on some nukes, but you know, if it's a person getting started for our flow down here, that's not a bad time because they can feed them for a week or so. Within two weeks, they'll have a tallow flow coming in for three more. They'll get them on into June. I don't think they'll need to feed them through June. They can to build them up more robust, um, but you know, just depends how big they get and if they're strong enough to defend themselves. But with feed internally, shouldn't be a problem. So, who knows? Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Got to go out here and look at some more colonies. Uh, shouldn't have any issues with swarming at this point in time. This is normally at the beginning of this flow. of norm I've, I've cleaned out some. I mean, they, they could swarm. I'm not saying swarm season's over. But the, the heaviest part of it's over for now. Uh, we get overcrowding swarms at the end of May and going into June because of the amount of tallow and if we didn't give them space. But for the most part, I've cleaned out a lot of the honey. I've uh, opened up uh, uh, colonies in, in that were overcrowded. I've opened them up some. I have split anything that was trying to swarm. I think I've sustained four or five uh, decent swarms that I can tell. Maybe give or take uh, one. I don't know. Maybe, maybe one more, one less. I'm, I'm not sure. I've caught two of them. That's good. I know, yeah, actually four or five at least, because I know today I got to move a couple supers off of um, some that were getting ready to swarm, and I split them, so they don't need those supers. I just left them there for storage. I'm gonna move them on to a colony that I know should need it, but for the most part, the swarming should be done. Got to watch it again at the end of the month, but I'm gonna go out there and move a couple supers around and see what we got in some of the supers, 
and from here on out it's it's just look at small things like this maybe some small singles out there that were growing up some swarms that are requeening things like that and other than that leave everybody alone it's going to be getting hot the honey's going to be coming in leave it alone let them cure it and be ready to harvest in a month that's the plan i'm gonna go out here and move some supers around so we'll go ahead and take a walk but this is basically what we've got everything is supered up um as much as it's going to get supered up and everything is kind of vented you can see little little uh like on these big ones i got a little bit of a vent there this one's got a vent to draw them up into that super now these are some single brood chambers that grew really fast really big and i put a super on it and they put no brood in this whatsoever so uh, it's almost full i went ahead and stacked a foundation on top don't know if they're going to have enough manpower or bee power or woman power to get that thing drawn out but uh, i got nowhere else to really put the super and that one back there she's putting in some brood and they're pretty big they got a foundation super in there as well so everybody's supered it's a little concerned with this one that they just they this is the one that we're making letting them make a queen and i want this go ahead and get this super off uh, i don't think they'll have the numbers to fill it although you got quite a bit in here but let's look at their numbers we don't even know if they got a laying queen yet this is the one where we had two virgins i didn't smoke them at all so they're a little honoring see their nest is so narrow they can put honey out here if they have to so I'd like to pull the super off of here. I don't think they're, since they were split off so uh, hard and they've got a new queen, I see no reason to keep this thing supered with a, a foundation. They're just not gonna do anything. So we'll let them finish filling this one. And we may pull a couple of frames out of here if they fill the top too much. But it's okay if they fill the top up with honey. That'll get them through the dearth and it'll be enough for fall. So it's not the end of the world if we let them do that. So this super's coming off, which is what I counted on. The only reason I left it on here was mainly because uh, I didn't have anywhere to put it and I didn't want to uh, just store it in the barn. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to put the empty frames toward the center. So that's all I'm doing is I'm moving these full ones out. A little bit of honey here. But empty on the one side. There we go. That's all I'm doing. Just going around and uh, taking the gander, seeing where I can move. I got three supers I want to place somewhere, and that way all my supers are placed. Uh, and go from there. Over here on this other stand is where a couple of them swarmed. But uh, for the most part, everybody is still pretty strong, so that's good. Everybody has requeened that I know of. I got a few singles that are building. This was a swarm I caught up in that tree, and they made emergency cells. So. I'm not sure if that queen we caught in occasion there was a good one, whether she was uh, uh, mated yet or not, or whether she tried to go get mated and didn't make it, but they had emergency cells in here. I thought it was small, it turned out to be bigger than it was, but I came in here and they had a bunch of emergency cells a week later. So either after the queen got out or whatever, something happened and things didn't pan out just right for this, this colony. I want to see anyway. They loaded up nectar though. This is off from since they've swarmed in. Oh no, there's eggs. We got a land queen. There's eggs. Look at all the pollen. After the flow, I'm going to be trapping a lot of pollen. And I don't know if we'll see it, but there's eggs in there. We got a laying queen. Golly, yeah, she's loading it up. So they'll be good going into summer. We'll get them treated, and on their way in the fall, we'll have us a nice production hive next year. What number is this? It's number 10. We still haven't seen the egg master, but I see the eggs. And again, I don't have to go any further, but I haven't actually dug through a brood nest in a couple weeks. Like, it, intensively. So I'm just going to go through and see. They didn't sound good when I opened them, but they're obviously queen, right? Maybe they just were upset. Yeah, there's the old 
emergency cell and this frame is full of nectar it's one of the old there were several emergency cells there's another one definitely uh that's good to know so that's queen right so i've got a, a i don't know it's a it's kind of the thing i do with how i vent them and it's uh it's pretty sophisticated uh, to some to some you may get confused on exactly how i do this and what i do and the steps i take to do it but let me show you what to do um first and foremost how i vent these hives so that we can get some airflow through them to help dry the nectar and draw the bees up to guard that top entrance a little bit so that we can move bees up into that super. Here's what I do. First step, get me a stick. I take that stick and I just do this with it. I break that off. That's it. I know it's tough, but it's, it's and it took me a lot of thought and everything to come up with that, but that's about what I, that's the best way I figured out to, um, to do it. Took me a few years to figure it out, but I got it. Of course, I'm just joshing. Yeah, it's uh, in the summertime, I'll vent these things just to help dry the honey. I, the late spring, I should say. Um, I've always heard it helps get some flow through the hive and then the bees can dry the honey down a little quicker. We got so much humidity. I don't even know how we dry it and what we got. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go vent these hives. Looks like everybody else is doing good. I've got a lot of queen right hives. I don't know if but one or two that are giving me fits now with a queen but out of 40 plus uh, I'm pretty satisfied so we're gonna move on everything is super at this point folks this is what I wanted to, what I really wanted to show you is that's a swarm that absolutely exploded that swarm is the one that fell out of the tree is it that one yeah that's the one that fell out of the tree it absolutely exploded we got it set up and it it blew up but it won't be a honey production. It's gonna fill the top deep for the flow. We may pull some honey off of some of these in order to free them up in the centers of their brood nest, in the centers of their boxes, and leave enough on the outsides for winter. All right, and here's what I've, so here's what I've got on these. And, and I'm, I'm showing you this because I am actually doing some single brood chamber stuff. I don't normally do single brood chamber stuff, but they're so strong that right before the flow, they need something. I almost don't want to put a deep on them because I don't want them to fill, you know, 40 or 50 percent of the deep with honey and then a little bit of brood. I'd rather them go ahead and fill me a super. I'll take it off, feed them up into their single, let them go through fall, feed them up into their single really good for winter, and let them come out as a single in, in, the, uh, in the spring. Now, single brood chambers, it's not ideal for down here for me just because of how long the season is, but for this situation, rather than just having partial fill a deep and really not get a good strong nest going into the dirt, I'd rather have them packed into a single going into the dirt. And that one, they're not even, uh, they put like no brood in the super. So I let them go up into the second one. So that's a single brood uh, deal. And this is a single brood deal. Now, last year I ran about four of these. I think this year I'm running six or seven. And it did work out good, but the only reason I was able to do it is because they got a very, very late start. So that's why. Well, folks, I'm going to call today. I busted through a few hives here and there. I went through some problem children I thought were problem children. Everybody's got queens doing well. Some are production hives, some aren't. This is just a video today about some hit and miss stuff. Uh, we're packing honey in. The flow is just about to be upon us. It just It's like it's right there, and it's been right there for like a week, and I feel like kicking it in the gear, and we'll go. But we're right there. So everything's stacked. All supers are deployed. May move a few around again next week as the flow begins. Kind of see where we're at. Who's doing what. Uh, four or five swarms. Maybe six swarms. Something like that have happened. Got to watch those. Make sure I'm not supering up on top of a swarm colony. Because they won't have the workforce. And it'll be a waste of a super. Where I really need a second one. On top of that one that's already got two. So. Eee. Tightening up on me. All right, guys, that's it for today. I know it was just a random here and there around the yard kind of thing, but that's really, I honestly, is all I did today was just randomly go around the yard and check some statuses. It's, uh, man, it's almost, it's almost honey harvest time. Wow. I'll we'll get to June. Ha <laughs> ha. Finally. But it's slowing down now for me. Now it's just a matter of a wait. It's a waiting game, guys. Well, as always, I appreciate y'all coming along with me yesterday and today. Uh, hope you enjoyed my little snippet of the market because uh, that is part of what my operation is. 
uh, we go to the market we sell a little bit of honey remember it's a it's, it's a, still a hobby for me and while that money is nice to have in it pays for my hobby it gives me a little bit of extra and allows me to buy some nice items I got one nice item should be on the way here pretty soon can't wait to show you guys that I saw it months and months ago uh, and then I saw the new revision in addition to those products and I can't wait to get it and show it to you guys I sure hope it helps my operation let me tell you what I think about small little little hobby operations like I have I used to think buying an expensive extractor buying an expensive bottler and all that was man you're too small for that don't spend all that money in something that you don't need it for what I found out is if you work full-time that equipment saves you so much time in the honey house and in here in, and out here in the bee yard like bottling I don't have to worry about uncrystallizing oh I bottled it put it in a warming box do all that get it out of the bottler it's done leave it in the uncapping tank plenty of room for it let it sit drain it later you know everything I get it makes my little operation so much easier so I can maintain it as a hobby and not make it a full-time job because I have a full-time job so it's nice to be able to like yesterday get back from the market take a nap relax the rest of the day this week I can cut grass take care of my neighbor's yard do all these things without investing so many hours in beekeeping that it becomes not so much fun if I didn't have a job be a different story but I got a job so, but uh, that's gonna be it for today I appreciate everybody watching don't forget if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and don't forget to share this video with your friends your family anybody that just enjoys watching bees it's Barry's best honey I'm Mike and I do bees y'all have a wonderful afternoon may Lord God bless you and keep you see y'all later